Welcome to Life Devotions. Thank you for joining me today. No corrupt word is the title of this devotion. I try to keep the titles as short as possible because otherwise, you know, if I, <laughs> if I let my thoughts go, they, they could be two pages long. But I, I do think that this subject is to be noted for each and every one of our daily lives. Some things you hear it every so often and it stirs you, reminds you, but when it comes to what comes out of our mouth, we need to have a daily guard of our heart and our mouth. Why? Because there are surprises in life that catch you off guard and, oh my goodness, can you then be provoked to say things that if you don't have a good guard on your heart daily, what comes out of your mouth could be so costly and detrimental. So it's so important, the opposite too, what comes out of your mouth could be so healing, so life-giving, and just a surprise opportunity. I, I really believe the importance of living ready for the opportunities in life, both good and not good, that we are there ready to give an account of what we believe by the way we speak and the way we are. And here in Ephesians chapter 4, verse 29, it says, Let no corrupt word proceed out of your mouth, but what is good, necessary for edification. Let no corrupt word proceed out of your mouth, but what is good for necessary edification, that it may impart grace to the hearers. Do not grieve the Holy Spirit of God by whom you were sealed for the day of redemption. Let all bitterness, wrath, anger, glamour, evil speaking be put away from you with all malice. We talked about anger yesterday. You see, you've got to put it away. Be kind to one another, tender-hearted, forgiving one another, even as Christ, even as God in Christ forgave you. Now, I believe that this, my friend, is more important than you may realize. Did you know that Jesus says in Matthew chapter 12, let me just look that up here. Jesus says in Matthew 12, starting in verse 33, either make the tree good or its fruit good, or else make the tree bad and its fruit bad. For a tree, that is the condition of your heart, is known by its fruit. Brood of vipers, how can you, being evil, speak good things? For out of the abundance of the heart, the mouth speaks. A good man, out of the good treasure of his heart, brings forth good things. An evil man, out of the evil treasure of his heart, brings forth evil things. But I say to you, that for every idle word men speak, they will give an account in the day of judgment. For by your words you will be justified, and by your words you will be condemned. Wow. We need to hear that to put a guard over our heart, a guard over our mouth, so that we don't have to be concerned that in the day of judgment, the Lord has to remind us of the judgments that have come because of the way we have judged with our tongue. The Lord says, judge nothing before it's time until the Lord comes and bring all things to the light. He says, judge not in Luke 6, lest you be judged. Be merciful as your heavenly Father is merciful. Forgive, give. And then he talks about how this will affect our lives to be filled up by what comes out of our mouth. David put a scripture in my heart that has helped me, Psalm 38. He said, but in verse 13, but I, like a deaf man, do not hear. And I am like a mute who does not open his mouth. Thus, I am like a man who does not hear and in whose mouth is no response. How do you guard your heart and your mouth? It's by what you hear. 
Faith in the heart comes by hearing, the scripture says in Romans 10, 17. You have to so guard yourself what you listen to. If you constantly listen to people speaking evil about others, it will form in your heart eventually and it will come out at, the, at an opportune time. And God will hold you in account even though you heard somebody else say it. We have to guard ourselves what we listen to. No, I don't want to listen to all these cruel, unkind things about other people. I don't. Virginia and I, we don't sit there listening and talking bad about people. We don't want it in our house. I also, when I hear some things, I immediately put it away. I don't come home and talk about it. I don't tell Virginia. I don't bring it in my own home. Folks, you got to decide what you bring in your house. I don't like bringing rubbish in my house. I take the rubbish out, not in. And we need to take the rubbish out, the trash out, and not bring it in. Can you hear me? I tell you the truth, I like to live in a clean home. I don't like to live in a home where there's always a story of unkindness or cruelness or exposing or gossip about somebody. I don't want to know it. And so you got to watch what you hear that affects the heart and eventually the mouth. And then he says in verse chapter 39 of the Psalms, verse 1, I said, I will guard my ways. This is what David says, lest I sin with my tongue. I'm going to guard how I listen into conversations. I'm going to guard how I listen in. Some people, they're always listening into other people's conversations. I have no idea what other people are talking about. I have no thought for it. I have no in me, oh, what are they saying? Nothing. No, it's none of my business. If they want me to know, they'll talk to me. And so. No, I don't listen in. I will guard my ways, lest I sin with my tongue. I will restrain my mouth with a muzzle. While a wicked is before me, I am mute with silence. You see, it is so important. And he then talks about talking to the Lord when things stir him up. It is so important that we just don't agree. We don't say a word. Some people take the bait and respond to it and make it worse, give it power. If you respond to something, you give it power. Nope, I'm, nope, I have nothing, nope, it's not my realm. See, no, the people know what I believe by what I say. People know what you and I believe by what we say. We need to be so guarded against what we say and it's the condition of our heart, my dear friends. We're going to Luke chapter 6 for a moment. That affects what comes out of your mouth. The Lord shows this. He says here in Luke chapter 6, he says, no, Jesus spoke this parable. Um, Luke chapter 6, verse 43. There it is, sorry. A good man... Excuse me, for a good tree does not bear bad fruit, similar as what he says in Matthew 12. Nor does a bad tree bear good fruit, for every tree is known by its fruit, by its own fruit. For men do not gather figs from thorns, nor do they gather grapes from a bramble bush. A good man out of the good treasure of his heart brings forth good, and an evil man out of the evil treasure of his heart brings forth evil, for out of the abundance of the heart his mouth speaks. You see, we need to so guard our heart. I was listening to my grandson, Eli, some years ago while we were hiking, talking to me. He's holding my hand. Oh, it was heaven to me. And we're just walking through the forest and he was talking about me, how he had forgiven his parents about, his mom or dad about something. You know, it's just like kids. But he was telling me how he had forgiven. And I was being so blessed listening to that beautiful young man. And I just got this thought in my heart. I said, wow, Eli, that is treasure in your treasure chest. He said, treasure? chest. I said, yes, did you not know that Jesus called our heart a treasure chest? And your forgiving showed what lives in your heart. That's like having treasure in your treasure chest. Always guard to keep that treasure in there. 
because what a blessing to be able to forgive and to let it go and not hold on to it. And you know, friends, when you hold on to offense, irritation, anger, resentment, malice, envy, strife, contention, when you hold on and you allow it to germinate inside of you, it will find an escape out of your mouth and you ruin your own life by what comes out of your mouth. So let me close with you here from Ephesians chapter 4, starting at verse 29 from the Amplified. Listen to this. Let no foul or polluting language. Foul, you know, vulgar, lustful, unclean. I have to guard myself. And I don't like it. If I, if I talk in a bit of a familiar way, I don't like it. Virginia really doesn't like it when I do that. And, and I've done it sometimes. You know, where it is too on the edge of what people might think I mean by it. And I should never talk in a way that creates questions. So I really go to the Lord and search myself. Well, how can I have gone there because I don't even want to know that. And I search myself and let God deal with my heart. I don't want to ever talk in a way that is un, un, uh, not godly, not pure, not holy, not true, imparting good thoughts into the hearts of the people. So let no foul or polluting language, um, nor evil word, nor unwholesome or worthless talk ever come out of your mouth, but only such a speech as is good and beneficial to the spiritual progress of others, or as is fitting to the need and the occasion, that it may be a blessing and give grace, God's favor to those who hear it. Sometimes, folks, we really can say something stupid. I can. Maybe not as often as I used to, but I could say something stupid, just silly. And I recently just went back to somebody here in the church. I said, you know what I said last Sunday to you? I know I was just making a joke, but that was so silly. I felt so embarrassed afterwards. I prayed about it. I just want to apologize to you that that was silly. And I, I made the person aware of what I said. And you see, I think we should take an account and clean up our mess when we've said things that are not proper, not right, or, or not fitting, or not beneficial, or not helpful, or not gracious or comforting. We, we should really take an account. We should not just brush it off as if, wow, I didn't mean to. No, we should take an account. Do not grieve the Holy Spirit of God. You see, when the, the way we talk affects the, 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 the presence of the Holy Spirit in us. Do not offend or vex or sadden the Holy Spirit by whom you were sealed and marked and branded as God's own and secured for the day of redemption of final deliverance through Christ from evil and the consequence of sin. Listen now. Let all bitterness, indignation, wrath, passion, rage, bad temper, resentment, anger, animosity, and quarreling, brawling, glamour, contention, slander, evil speaking, abusive or blasphemous language be banished from you with all malice, spite, ill will, baseness of any kind. Come on, be useful, helpful, kind to one another, tender-hearted, compassionate, understanding, loving-hearted, forgiving one another readily and freely as God in Christ forgave you. Friends, I think that we need to really determine my mouth is an instrument of life, an instrument of healing, a well of life. The fruit of my lips bring healing, cleansing, restoration, reconciliation to people. The words of my mouth are pleasing to my Father, are inspired by the Holy Spirit, enabled by God. Look up scriptures like where Jesus said in John 14, the words that I speak, I speak not of my own, 
but it's the Father who is in me who does the works, and the works He does, I will do also, and the works I do, you will do also. Friends, I really believe God would have such command over our hearts and our mouth that what comes out of us brings life to those who hear us and healing, healing to a situation. It can be so simple. One word can bring healing to somebody. And I will close with this one scripture that I would encourage you to read and I will encourage you to take the lesson of today and begin to meditate on the word when it comes to this area. And here in Isaiah chapter 50 is a verse four that has helped me. The Lord God has given me the tongue of the learned that I should know how to speak a word in season to him who's weary. He awakens me morning by morning. He awakens my ear to hear as the learned. He has taught me how to speak. I still keep learning. I can't say to you, I never make mistakes, but I keep learning. I keep learning. I keep learning. And I'm a learner, not a failure. A failure is somebody who refuses to keep learning because you're angry with yourself, you feel embarrassed, you feel ashamed, and then you don't want to talk about it, and, and then you don't want to learn. No, come on now. Stop being angry, humble your heart, and go back apologize if you said things wrong and say, Lord, please, please, Lord, give me the tongue of the Lord and so I know how to speak. Please, Lord, take command of my heart and mouth. Teach me, Lord. I want to learn how to speak properly and rightly and goodly and I don't want to err in my words. And folks, if you're somebody that just talks, 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 the Bible says in the multitude of words, sin is not lacking. You got to become calm of heart and slow of speech and quick to listen, the Bible says. Slow of speech. You need to learn to listen. Often just listening to people is what helps them and giving them the feeling that you sympathize and empathize with their lives and not just always make it about you and you just talk, talk, talk. No, learn how to speak words that bring comfort and healing by the Holy Spirit and keep learning. I keep learning and I keep humbling myself and I go and apologize when I said something wrong and and I just I just wonder Lord to keep teaching me. Amen. Have a good day.